Welcome to In The Workshop, and this one covers problems with model boiler fittings, and there are plenty of them. This boiler is a Stuart Models 3500 type. Initially I gave the boiler a hydraulic test, as I usually do, but I didn't video it because I've already done a video about the hydraulic testing of a model steam boiler. In order to perform the hydraulic test I had to remove all of the boiler's fittings, and now I'm refitting the fittings. When I first bought this boiler, it did not have a check valve, also known as a clack valve, fitted at all. So I found one in a box, an old one. And the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at this to make sure that it's working properly. This is a Stuart Models clack valve, and I don't know how old it is, but it seems okay. And the good news is, the top cap comes off. Sometimes they do not. If you look closely at this clack valve, and I'll pause the video so you can see it clearly, you will notice that it has three aluminium washers fitted, one where it goes into the boiler, one to the top cap that I've just removed, and one is also fitted to the small blanking plug at the front of the clack. More about this later. For now, it's time to have a look at the internal contents of the clack valve. And what's this? A rusty ball valve? This is most unusual. Definitely not a Stuart part. In the bottom right of the picture is the top cap that I've removed and you will notice that the unthreaded centre part is longer than it needs to be. It's designed like that to limit the ball travel. As an educated guess, I would think that someone has removed this top cap in the past and lost the ball, then replaced the ball with a standard ball bearing that was larger than the original stainless steel ball, hence the extra washer on the top cap, to allow the ball to lift off the seat, but now it's completely rusty and useless and there's a lot of rust contamination inside the clack valve body. So what I'm doing here, I'm using a piece of wood and some of this abrasive compound to clean out the inside part of the valve body. And why am I using a piece of wood? A piece of metal may damage the valve seat. And using this abrasive compound, I've also cleaned up the outside of the valve too. But there's still a way to go before it becomes as polished as I want it to be. You will notice in this picture that there is a stainless steel ball next to the rusty one on the bench. I'll be fitting this shortly. But before I do any fitting, I'm cleaning up the part using some cellulose thinners. Time to think about reassembly. First question, do I fit the aluminium washer? Uh, no. If I do need to fit a washer, and I may not need to fit a washer to this part, I would use a copper one like this, far better, and no cathodic corrosion. Cathodic corrosion is when two dissimilar metals are in contact with each other and over time one of the metals will start to corrode and this is very badly corroded, it's just falling to bits. So in my opinion, the fitting of aluminium washers is not a good idea. They do take considerable time before they corrode away but then they cause problems for the other part of the fitting. I could not successfully remove this small inspection blanking plug, it was damaged. Why is there a blanking plug here? Well, frequently, the bottom end of the water gauge will get blocked up as it goes through into the boiler, usually with lime scale or similar debris. And the idea is you remove the blanking plug and push something through to clear the blockage. I have a better idea. Why not fit a drain cock instead? It seems to me to be a good idea because you can just open the drain cock and push a very thin piece of wire through the hole to clear the blockage. In this clip, I'm fitting the drain cock using some Loctite 542. But as I'm fitting it, I'm realising that the drain cock's thread is too long. Once the drain cock was fitted, the thread of the drain cock protruded into the opening, so therefore I couldn't fit the top cap because it fouled part of it. And here you can see me attempting to fit the top cap, and it's just not going to go in there. It's a very simple fix though. I removed the drain cock, ground some of the thread away on the one inch belt sander and refitted it with some more Loctite 542. Before fitting the top cap, it is most important to seat the ball. And to do this, you put the ball in the valve and use a piece of brass rod, hold it perfectly vertical and hit it with a hammer once. And this makes sure that the ball is firmly seated over the hole in the bottom of the valve. It's a good idea though, after hitting that ball with a hammer, to fit a new ball into the valve, just in case the heavy hammer blow has distorted the shape of the one you used to seat the valve. In this clip, I'm permanently fitting the top cap in place, and now it's time to test it. 
the drain cock works OK, and by pressing the ball from underneath it does this. If the ball seats correctly using compressed air, it will definitely be OK when it's using water. Time now to fit the rebuilt and modified clack valve to the boiler, and I'm using some Loctite 542 once again for this. And to the viewer who asked me, what kind of Loctite do you use? Well, obviously he hasn't watched the other 922 videos. I use Loctite 542 as a thread sealant, and I use Loctite 603 as a high strength retainer. I didn't have to use a washer on this valve because it aligned perfectly in the boiler bush without one, and the Loctite 542 will ensure that it never leaks. Most of the problems with boiler fittings are caused by impurities in the water. I suppose you could use distilled water, which is okay for small models, but in a good steaming session I would go through a gallon of water. But I use tap water because I like to live life on the edge. I just clean out the boiler periodically with some kettle descaler. Time now to fit the pressure gauge. This is the original Stuart pressure gauge that was fitted to this boiler and it's fitted using a siphon, which is the bent copper part, and the siphon is always full of water, which stops the steam from directly getting to the pressure gauge, where it could damage the soft-soldered bellows inside. I noticed that there was an aluminium washer also fitted to the blanking plug at the front of the boiler, so I removed this, cleaned it up, and refitted it with a copper washer. As I don't want just wet steam to go to the steam engine, I need to build a superheater or steam dryer. Normally, I would fit a tap to the boiler, one like this, but it doesn't look very good. I don't know, it's out of scale and it's just horrible. So what I'm going to do is pipe directly from the central steam dome to the superheater, and I'll be showing how I make that in another episode. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.